Welcome guys, um, today uh, we are going to talk about economics and statistics and I have a special guest. I want to welcome her to introduce herself and maybe tell us about herself in the journey in economics and statistics. Um, hello, I'm happy to be here. My name is Thelma Tabitha. Mm -hmm. I'm an economist uh, and a statistician and I've also completed CPA level 1 and I'm currently in um, beginning my career in economics, in the field of economics and statistics. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us more about your academic uh, background in ec economics? So, um, economics, I began my uh, academic background in economics at Kenyatta University mm -hmm. where I did a double major, that is my first major is economics, then statistics. Mm -hmm. So, where economics focuses on the, um, the theory aspect mm -hmm. when it comes to building policy related issues mm -hmm. and statistics comes in handy as the quantitative part of it. So, we use statistics to complement economics in order that we come up with solutions mm -hmm. that that are workable. All right. Even as you progress, uh, talking about economics, I heard you mention uh, CPA. Could you tell us what motivated you to pursue CPA after economics? So I was motivated to pursue uh, CPA, which is Certified Public Accounting, because uh, in order to enhance my knowledge of uh, financial reporting mm -hmm. and budgeting and forecasting, yes. I needed to do the CPA part. So that's what motivated me to venture into CPA. Oh, well, we are progressing well, my guys. Um, what challenges did you face while studying both fields? Like, did you experience any challenge? Oh, yes. When studying both economics and statistics, mm -hmm. the challenge that comes is that some, uh, the statistics is highly quantitative. Mm -hmm. Also, as you advance deeper into economics, you encounter econometrics and operation research courses. These are very highly quantitative and rigorous courses that mm -hmm. require much of your attention. Mm -hmm. They require focus and they require practice. So this was the challenging bit that I found yes. when pursuing economics and statistics. Also, additionally for the CPA, it is quite tasking and engaging. It requires you to have at least a singular focus and to be more detailed so I'd say the challenge is that these are courses that are heavily engaging so they require you to do an to go an extra mile oh wow progressing well my guys um, and now tell me how has having both qualifications um, influenced your career path so having both um, both qualifications in economics statistics and CPA has influenced my career yes. path in that uh, when working, I'm able to synthesize raw data mm -hmm. and also now transform this data into maybe policy recommendations. Yes. So this is very important and also using the data, we can now come up with things like budgets. Mm -hmm. We can budget for things. So yes. this is how this has complemented my studies. Yes. So I use the economics now to inform the policy making decisions. And I use the statistics now yes. to come up with data or to interpret now the quantitative data. Say like maybe we are looking at the uh, income reporting for yes. Kenya over maybe the last 10 years. Yes. And now with the CPA part, I'm able now to uh, account yes are we doing well now as a country when preparing now the statement of financial positions and mm. the income statements of maybe an organization yes. or maybe now when we come to our country this is how i use both studies oh nice one guys i hope you're learning something and picking something from there so i want us to uh, to talk about uh, can you share examples where by economics knowledge complemented your cpa Yes. So, um, economics knowledge complemented my CPA when I was working on a project yes. of forecasting the revenue mm. of a, a certain company here in Kenya. So, when working on forecasting their projected revenue for the next five years, yes. we were now using the data of their financial reporting, mm. their present data. So, using now economics and uh, economic forecasting, yes. I was able to simulate and now project their income for the next five years. Oh, nice one. What kind of industries or uh, roles value this combination the most? So this combination, I would say largely, 
Every government organization must have an economist or a statistician. So if you're looking to work in the government, uh, this, is a, this is the way to go. It's a good course. Yes. Also, additionally, when you're looking to venture into financial services, if you're looking to venture into uh, consumer goods and capital goods, it's also a good course. So this is a course that is highly applicable. Also, if you're looking to also venture in consulting, Economics is it comes in handy because you now use that data to synthesize and process the information to your customers when you are in, in, into consulting. Okay. So, what technical or soft skills um, uh, have been most valuable in your career? The most uh, technical skills that have been most valuable in my career, I would start by maybe advanced Excel. Mm -hmm. We use advanced Excel to create pivot charts and pivot tables. Mm -hmm. Additionally, we also use it now to generate graphic graphs so that we now visualize the data. Mm -hmm. Additionally, also starter. Starter has also been a good technical skill that can help you now to forecast and yes. simulate the data. Mm -hmm. I would also encourage one to venture into Python and yes. R. They also come in handy because this is a very quantitative field. And they will also come in handy when now you are working on the data. Okay. Before I go to the, uh, the next question, can you tell us the economic state of the nation right now as an econ economist? As an economist, when I look at the economic state of the country, I would say now we want to look at now the borrowing, we look at money circulation in the economy, we also look at the infl inflation rate in the economy. So, basing on my analysis, I would say that the economy is not in a bad position because the inflation rate is currently it's controlled and the borrowing rates are also good and money circulation is also in the economy. Okay. So, basing on me, I would say the economy is not in a bad position. Position. Okay, meaning uh, the things I've been hearing are just rumors because I've heard Kenyans quite really complaining that uh, developments are taking place but money is, money is not flowing. That's why things seem to be quite difficult. So what do you say about that? It depends. Yes. You know, we have we have money circulation in the economy. One thing I can say is that we have money circulation in the economy because the reason I'm saying is that Kenya has large access to yes. many credit lending facilities. Mm -hmm. We have these apps on your mobile phone, we have mm -hmm. the Hustler Fund, we also have this one, Fuliza Services, mm -hmm. these ones that, you know, you you draw over your limit. And because of these, these opportunities mm -hmm. that people have to borrow and lend money, mm -hmm. so it helps to enhance money circulation in the economy. Otherwise, but for the people that are maybe in the poor section, maybe they suffer more. Mm -hmm. But currently, for the people that are in the middle, middle the class. middle income and yeah. the high income, yes. for them it's not badly off because now they have access to credit lending facilities, mm -hmm. so they can access money more easily. And also, the government has eased on borrowing and lending. There are not so many regulations as towards borrowing and lending of money. So that's why I'll say that the economy of Kenya is not badly off. Maybe we just need to enhance other areas. But when I, when the problem, when we have now too much money circulation in the economy, this is what causes inflation to go very high. So we have situations of hyperinflation where the prices of commodities are tripling or doubling. So in such a case, I would maybe uh, advocate for the government now to reduce money circulation in the economy. And this is true, maybe we can, okay, reduce government spending to reduce money circulation. We can also increase the taxes a little bit so that we reduce now money. But when the economy is not doing so wonderfully, we can also introduce austerity measures. When I speak of austerity measures, those are the measures that I've said, we want to reduce now money circulation so that we control inflation but remember to the viewers inflation is not a bad thing inflation is good but inflation is only good when the level of inflation is five percent five percent and below anything above that that's when inflation becomes good so but inflation is not a problem in economics mm -hmm. any good economy should have an, a little bit of inflation but at, at the level of five percent and below Wow, well explained. Um, and this question to you, let me pose it to you. Yes. How do you keep up with changes in accounting, standards and economic trends? 
for me i used a combined approach mm -hmm. and my approach is that i keep up with uh, economics journal yes i'm also uh, i've subscribed to some um, financial magazines and economics magazines like mm -hmm. the financial times yes. and the economic times so through this i'm able to now observe the new trends that are occurring in in the market you know mm -hmm. we are able to see maybe like we see we are able to know like the tariffs in mm -hmm. the us in the us economy and we can analyze how now it's affecting our economy or affecting economy of developing countries mm -hmm. additionally i also uh, learn new skills because when with changing times we also need now to upgrade our skills so i enroll in edx classes also uh, through that edx you can access classes from harvard from mit those are very good economic schools mm -hmm. so this helps you now to keep up with the changing trends in also attending forums i attend forums where it is economics led discussions mm -hmm. that are going that are going on okay uh, how important is data analysis in your work? Data analysis is very important in my work because mm. when we have data but we cannot analyze data, it becomes meaningless. But today, if we have data on maybe the GDP, the gross domestic product of Kenya, we can now interpret at what position is the economy in and what measures can maybe be taken to increase the GDP of our country, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. So data is important because with the data, now you use the theory now to analyze mm -hmm. this data. Mm. Wow. So how will you advise somebody, a young person, maybe in campus, just checking in, and do, do you want to pursue maybe CPA or economics? How would you advise such people? Remember, don't focus solely on now pursuing economics and statistics. Yes. Just be open-minded. Make use of your holidays now to take advantage of CPA. There's also um, CFA if yes. now you want to major the finance part. So utilize your long holidays so that you build skills mm -hmm. and also push yourself go out there seek internships and attachments that will help you now to relate the classroom environment now to the real world you'll be able to relate now the applica applicability of what you're learning mm -hmm. all right so let me ask you uh, would you recommend doing cp immediately after university or working first so it depends on the field that you want to major. If you want to major into financial reporting, mm -hmm. I would recommend that maybe you start pursuing CPA during your undergraduate. Mm -hmm. But now if you want to work on the statistics part, you can do it after your undergraduate. Okay. Yes. Looking back, uh, would you have done it different in your journey, in your career? Yeah. Looking back, yes, I would have done differently. Had I the access to the information that I have right now, I would have pursued opportunities of maybe growth mm -hmm. earlier on in my undergraduate. Okay. So I want you to face the uh, camera now. You know, talk about uh, the viewers. Um, what is the state of this nation? I know you had answered that question, but uh, I want you to talk about borrowing and lending. Because I've heard people complain uh, they don't have the knowledge, the techno, uh, the knowledge of know how. How do you put it? The know how knowledge of the economic. So, how would you tell them? How would you advise them? Because uh, Kenyans love rumors a lot. Yes. So currently, the national debt is at 5 trillion Kenyan shillings. And the problem is that the country is borrowing more than it can repay. And when a country is borrowing more than it can repay, we, are, we now as economists advocate for debt restructuring. Debt restructuring with organizations such as the IMF, the World Bank, and now the Exim Bank of China because you know Kenya is borrowing largely from China. Additionally, you know, I would, uh, I'd like to encourage the government to now uh, we should focus on other means of raising income aside from borrowing. We can focus on the resources that we have because I know our country is equipped with resources. We have a lot of learned people here that is now human capital. Human capital is here in the land. We can focus that as a means of raising income so that we can reduce the debt because now the government's borrowing is way beyond. And the problem with such high government borrowing is that the burden of it is now passed on to the consumers. It is now the consumers who bear the brand of such excessive borrowing from the government. And that's what maybe BB Kenyans complain because 
because you know they are feeling the pinch. Mm -hmm. So I would uh, encourage that the government looks into other means of raising income or other means of funding development projects aside from borrowing. Okay. Before you give your part, uh, your parting shot. I want to maybe to talk about employment, right? uh, because I realize most people are unemployed, people keep complaining. So my question is this, is it the work of the government to employ all of us as Kenyans? It is not the work of the government to employ all of us as Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And we know in economics, we also look at maybe what are some of the reasons for unemployment. Mm -hmm. And I would say one of the reasons for unemployment or for high unemployment in Kenya has to do with the education system. Mm -hmm. The problem is that the education system here has not taught Kenyans now how to be innovative. Mm -hmm. All of us don't need to be employed. We can be ourselves, we can be creators, Absolutely. innovators, mm -hmm. employers. So the problem is maybe we we'll start with restructuring the education system so that um, when young people are in schools, they are given the tools that they need to come out here and also uh, be dependent on themselves. They come out here being independent. And for me, I think if the CBC is well implemented in the future, we might see now a change in this drastic unemployment. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, guys, I want to thank you to, for today. It has been quite an interesting conversation. And before we check off the camera, I want uh, our guest today to maybe give us a parting shot. Yeah. So, welcome, Venus. So you give your parting shot today. So, my parting shot is that um, for the viewers that are watching me out and you are a student, for as, uh, as, you, as you are a student, don't focus on just building yourself in school. With the changing times and um, the developments in AI and whatever, please learn a skill. Learn something that you can trend on. Don't depend on your education alone because at times, you might reach out here and realize that most of the things that you learn in school, mm -hmm. they are not highly applicable. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you that push yourself out. There are many opportunities for you. It's just that most of us, we are never fully prepared on now how to approach and optimize the resources and the opportunities around us. Yeah. Otherwise, guys, you want to close it. And thank you so much for today, for following and I know you, I hope you learned something. Otherwise, bye bye.